Good morning, and once again, happy Mother's Day to all our moms and grandmothers and mother figures in the congregation. Parents, both moms and dads, definitely have the hardest job in the world. And this world would be in a horrible place without their love and sacrifice and perseverance. Of course, it's not easy to be a mom, but you know that. A mom on Twitter wrote these words, Parenting is 70% yelling, 20% asking the kids why they're yelling, and 10% trying to find out where you left your coffee. <laughs> Speaking of coffee, which seems to be an important part of we Lutherans' lifestyle, one mom has a recipe for iced coffee. Perhaps you've heard this one. The first need thing you need for iced coffee is to have kids. Then make the coffee. Forget where you put the coffee. Put it in the microwave to heat it back again. Forget that you put it in the microwave. And then finally, six, drink it cold. There's your iced coffee. Well, we can have some fun with that, but we know that moms and dads are busy. They indeed have a unique and special task in life. And it's not an easy one. But it's one that most moms pick up. And in their hearts, they have a compassion for their children. They have a care and a love. Today in our lesson, we want to talk about compassion. We're going to be turning to the life of Tabitha, also known as Dorcas. And we will find in her not just an example of compassion, but what a like of life of caring and compassion is all about. But what do I mean when I say compassion? Well, compassion is a concern for the suffering of others. It's an active response to another person's pain. Once again, compassion is at the heart of our lesson for today. But compassion can come and go very quickly. We're not always compassionate throughout the day. We might be a bit compassionate in some situations, but not another. A woman tells of falling down in the icy parking lot, December, of a busy department store. And she was lying there trying to, well, just clear her head. Another woman drove up and called out from the window, Are you hurt? No, she said, I just need a moment to get up. Good. Then you'll be leaving your parking place. I need one, she answered. <laughs> Compassion can sometimes be pretty short-lived. A call from out the window. But then, can we have that parking place? But compassion is more than a moment, and it's more than a quick thing we do to benefit ourselves. But sometimes we find compassion not just in adults, but in children. I would share another story. This one from a teacher in South Carolina. The teacher was a teacher of first graders. Most of the children in the school were from underprivileged homes. One of his students' name was Paula. Paula lived in a small apartment with her family, including grandparents, mother, sister, even an uncle. One day, a new boy came to school into Paula's class. Billy was his name, and he was assigned to the same class where Paula attended. When the young man came and sat down, he looked a bit scared and uncertain. But she whispered to him, don't worry about it. I'm here, and I'm glad you're in the class with us. There's lots of, learn lots of things to learn here, and it can be lots of fun. Later that day, Mr. Barton, Paula's teacher, called her aside and said, I noticed you were helping young Billy out. Thank you for that. She said, I remember when it was my first day here. And I know that I needed a neighbor then, and you and the class were neighbors for me. 
So I thought I would be a neighbor for him. That first grader understood compassion. She knew what it was be like to be in that classroom all by themselves. The new person kind of thing. So she was ready to help the next person who would come. Just like she was helped. But once again, we can oftentimes find our compassion fleeting. We can pass by someone on a street corner asking for help. And maybe even do something. But then the next day we'll drive by that same scene and wonder, why can't that person do for himself? Compassion. It can be fleeting. Because sometimes we can be hurt when we reach out to others. Caring can be dangerous. It leaves us open to being hurt ourselves or looking like a fool. One person writes in his diary, I have, decided, I have decided to keep a secret store of indifference so I can pull it out as self-protection when people try to ask me for things. Indifference. That can easily describe the world in which we live. It's a fast-paced world. It's a busy world. And once again, I'll remind you of what that word busy means. Being under Satan's yoke. Nevertheless, we fill our lives busier and busier with many things. But in the busyness, in the trying to keep up, we find ourselves being less and less caring for the people who are right next to us. That brings us now to our text and the story of Tabitha. She was an unusual and remarkable disciple. Our story begins like this. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name is Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. Wow, what an epitaph to have about your life. Always doing good and helping. Not once in a while. Not if nobody else was around. But doing good. But Tabitha died. And the disciples there in Joppa, well, they were so upset about her death that they asked for Simon Peter to come over and see if he could do anything. He was in a nearby town. Peter was the head of the disciples now that Jesus had died and rose again. When Peter got to Tabitha's house, he was taken upstairs to the room where they had laid her body. Among the mourners in that upper room were a group of widows. Widows and orphans were the neediest members of the society in that day. They were completely dependent on the help of others and their compassion. Without it, they would become beggars or even worse. Now these widows were distraught. They were crying. They showed Peter the robes that Tabitha would make. Tabitha not only bought the material, but she had the skill to put them together. And she was there for their needs. And she showed her compassion. Not just by talking about them, but by her actions. Peter asked them to leave. He knelt to pray. And then she was healed. He called them back and presented her to them. Obviously, they were surprised. Yes, but God had done this work because they needed to see indeed 
the power of love at work. And in Tabitha, they saw compassion and love. Tabitha lived her life with purpose. She had direction. She had found her Lord, and now that Lord was the Lord of each and every day. Not a moment here or a moment there. Wow. And the people knew it. She ministered to others, not barking at them, not scolding them, but caring lovingly for them. She didn't blame them for their circumstances, but lifted them up in their circumstances and brought a healing and a caring and a love that was genuine and real. We don't always start life that way. Sometimes it takes something very unique to change us. Chuck Colson, if you remember the name, was a political advisor during the era of President Richard Nixon. He was involved in the Watergate scandal and was sent to prison. Colson had led his life seeking power, prestige, money. In prison, all of that changed. He got a new purpose in life. Not serving himself, not building up for himself, but recognizing and touching the needs of others. His conversion was a genuine one. And as he continued his ministry to those in prison, even after he was out, he would write books or do speaking engagements, and he would give the proceeds from all of that to the poor. He retired to Naples, Florida. That was his home area. Now, Naples is a lovely area. Some of you may have visited it. One of the things that Naples is known for is the number of golf courses it has. And it seems like a lot of CEOs, after they retire, like to go to Naples. They like to find out how many holes of golf they can play in a day, day after day. When their lives had once been filled with purpose and work, now it was all about getting out, chasing that little white ball, rolling it on the green. Colson would ask them, is this what your life really was meant to be? Is that why you worked so hard those many years so that now you could come and, well, play a game? Many of them would nod their head, but he would look into their eyes more deeply And he could see that, well, for many of them, after a year or two years of chasing that little white ball, life wasn't nearly so fulfilling anymore. The object of life is not what we can gain or not what we hope to gain when we reach a certain age. It's in the maturing of our souls in faith, growing daily in the practice of love, compassion, and care. Tabitha reached out to the people who were there, just like Jesus did. Jesus didn't tell people, come and see me when I'm in Jerusalem, and I'll see what I can do for you. No, he traveled the towns and places. He was where the people needed him to be. And when he was there, he brought them health, healing, hope, life. Well, that's the life that God would have us lead as well. Walking hand in hand with our Lord as he leads and guides us, as he brings us to those people who need our ministering, and we show that love. Compassion is about action. It's not just the thought in our head or the emotion in our heart, but it's the reaching out with our hands. 
It's taking our feet and walking the walk of faith and letting our hands serve those in need. Well, it's following Jesus. Tabitha was truly a caring woman, and she lived a fulfilling life. She had a sense of purpose, and she lived that. She translated her compassion into action. Again, wow. Without that compassion in action, we wouldn't be reading about her some 2,000 years later. But wherever the gospel is preached, wherever the gospel is read, we will hear about a woman 2,000 years ago who was so loving, the people around her, well, they went to get someone who might bring her back to them. Now, she would later pass away, that's true. But her legacy of love lasts for all to see. God calls us to be that same kind of person, to live that same kind of life, to be known by our compassion and care. Well, the power of Christ moves lives. It has brought us here today, and we are thankful. It has brought us here to hear the good news that for all eternity we have a home already. And so our perspective on life is not just this moment, but it's an eternal one. And that's what motivates, that's what drives, that's what moves us. And our lives, too, can be a testimony to our faith and to the generations to come as parents, as neighbors, and as friends. Let me tell you the story of a more modern-day Tabitha. Her name, Dr. Martha Myers. In 1977, she moved to Yemen, to serve as a doctor of obstetrics and gynecology. Her target audience were the Yemen, Yemeni women, who often lacked medical care, and because of their religion, were prohibited from seeing a male doctor. Myers worked at a Yemeni hospital founded by the American Baptist. But she also traveled to the most remote areas around the hospital, to make house calls for her patients. Her love, commitment, compassion earned her both admiration, but also enemies. One day, a patient of Dr. Myers told her husband that she had never experienced such love and compassion in her life as she did from Dr. Myers at the hospital. This was the wrong thing to say to her husband. For he was concerned that his wife might be influenced by the doctor's Christian faith. And he was Muslim. The husband promptly went to the hospital and gunned down Dr. Myers and two of her colleagues. At the time of her death, Dr. Myers had served the women of Yemen for more than 25 years. The result? 40,000 people attended her funeral. And at her funeral, it was said regarding her life. The gunman did not take her life, for she lost her life to Christ years ago when she trusted him. And she has been serving him ever since. Does that describe your life now? Is it how people will describe you After you're gone, you and I were made to be Jesus in the world. That means living with compassion, a compassion that is active. And if we commit to living this way, then our lives, like Tabitha's, like Dr. Meyer's, will have an eternal impact as well.
May it be so. Amen. Now truly the peace of God that passes understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in faith through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.